Hello and welcome to the Future of Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I am your host, Ty Christensen. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Cameron Mickle on the pod. Is it real? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? A little gruffer, Cameron. I don't know. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> and we've got Jordan Christensen on the pod. Interlinked within cells, interlinked within cells, interlinked within cells. Interlinked. Interlinked with cells. Cells. Interlinked. Cells. Interlinked. I felt like Dude, I was going I, crazy. I cried at that part. I was like, man, like, it, it, because the, if you listen to the words, it's like the idea of a connecting an emotion. Like, that's why he started there, like, you failed your test, is because it's this, they're asking questions like, what is it like to hold the, the hand of a child? Oh, it's so good. And he starts to feel like, uh, oh, this movie's amazing. Anyways. Uh, uh, I think I feel something. And we've got Matthew Knutson. He named you. You must be important. <laughs> yes. That's great. Guys, today we are discussing Blade Runner 2049. This movie came out in 2017. It was directed by Denny Villeneuve, written by Hampton Fancher. Michael Green did the screenplay, and Philip K. Dick, he did the, uh, <laughs> I was kind of emphasis on the d- I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Philip K. D- uh, did the Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. That was what the original Blade Runner was based off of. I don't know if there was a sequel or there's book series or anything like that. I know nothing about Blade Runner, so I'm going to have you guys correct me. I'm a stupid person. So this, uh, this movie stars... Harrison Ford, Ryan Gosling, Ana de Armas, Dave Bautista. Oh, yeah. Ana de Armas, baby. Hallelujah. Robin Wright, Mark Arnold, and a few others, but that's pretty much the key players that we got here. We had, like, Wood Harris and David Dasmalchin, also- which you can't forget him. David freaking computer guy is, like, in every single Danny Villeneuve's films, which is so funny. The Polka Dot Man. Yeah. yeah. Coco? Why do you Coco- have to die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they also had the I am Punch the captain the now good. guy oh, for one scene. Oh, wait, yeah. guys, guys, everybody, shut up, shut up, shut up. None of these actors even hold a candle to Jared Leto, who is in this movie. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I can't believe Jared Leto is in this movie, and I forgot that he was in this it's movie. It's like the weirdest oh cameo. God. Yeah. <laughs> even though he's, like, technically the villain. <laughs> when the trailer of this came out, Ty, I, like, messaged, but, I mean, I messaged on the YouTube video, and I shouldn't have because that turned into a whole storm of people, like, bashing me i was like does anybody get the same like vibe from his joker persona and everybody's like oh no he's like this is a whole new like anyways they were talking about his performance and the way he enunciates and talks is like so it's very nuanced Jordan. you wouldn't understand i know i was like okay i guess not i guess i'm the only one that started thinking of his joker yeah because if there's anything that you know 30 seconds to mars needs is more fan people to protect them jordan you know, the, prop, the problem was you're in the, the, the comment section of a youtube which only has psychopaths so it's true <laughs> yeah i i do enjoy going to videos with more dislikes than likes and reading comments because <laughs> i'm always like ish ever i i have hope for humankind by doing that because i i enjoy it very much too bad youtube took but away even, the dislike button now, now we won't well, be they them. they initially did. They're st- they're starting to phase it out. It hasn't happened across all videos, but it is slowly and surely they're trying to get rid of it because they want to create the contents, uh, content creators' feelings. <laughs> well, we don't care what you think here because we have a video that's more disliked than like. Come at me, internet! I freaking love you all, you freaks and geeks of the internet. Come after me, it's man! A great song. You guys are all looking for the movie out there, and uh, we're just podcast reviewers. So I'm very sorry that you came looking for our channel, <laughs> hoping to find a full length pirated copy of the film. No, we're just uh, podcasters uh, talking about the movie. So you can at least hear our analysis of it while you're still looking for the other the full length video. So, but uh, today. Let's talk about Blade Runner 2049. What was it like watching it for the first time and rewatching it for the podcast? Uh, why don't we start with you, Jordan? Oh, yes. Okay, so I saw this in the theaters when it first came out, the opening weekend. I was so happy and so excited. And when I went and saw it, uh, the guy next to me, it was really funny because there's a part where it says California 2049. And the guy next to me, because I was in Texas at the time, he started laughing because it was just <laughs> the idea that like California... Yeah, it's like only this far away before it... I mean, to be fair, this is based off of the original Blade Runner, which happens not that uh, far before it. So they were just... No, say, mind you, it was 2019 is what they predicted. Y- y- exactly. Which so, is really weird to watch it because they got Skype almost right. 
but you still have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only thing they got right. <laughs> but I, I just love that they continued off of that. And so that's why it was really funny, him laughing. And it was a very fun experience. I, I, I think I might have overhyped it just because I had seen Blade Runner, the original, like a billion times. And so I was just like... This better be perfect. Yeah, and it was you, only f- you literally, I remember when you were going to the theater, you're like, well, Blade Runner, tw- Blade Runner is my favorite movie of all time. And you're like, and Daniel Villeneuve is probably my favorite uh, director of all time uh, right now. And he's like, so this is going to be the best movie of all time. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're going with the expectations low. It, well, yeah, it, yeah, it, it might be right. now my favorite. I think I just recently added it to my top 10. So it's unbelievable. And I rewatching it, obviously, it's a masterpiece, so. It made your top 10, huh? Yep. Did it have to kick out 127 hours? Uh, that wasn't in my top 10. I know, but it, you, you tried to add it in. <laughs> After I mentioned it, you're like, wait, wait oh, a second. Uh, let me, it's, let me it's, finish my number, my list. it's my number 11. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. Cameron, how about you, man, watching it for the first time, rewatching it for the pod? So it's funny. The first time I was ever exposed to this, Jordan showed me just the, the water fight scene because he's like, this movie's super slow, and I don't think you would like it. And I was just like, um, okay. So he showed me the water fight. I don't even know what you're talking about. What's the water? Oh, when the two robots are fighting. Sea yeah, wall. at the end. And the... Have you seen this movie, Ty? Yeah, but, I, <laughs> but it's, well, I wouldn't call it the water fight. I was thinking of like water pistols and, and hose, you know, fire hoses. Like, what are you talking about? You mean like when they're fighting by the seaside? Yeah, okay, got it. There's water there. Just so funny to hear you call it a water fight scene. <laughs> Sorry. That like, was no, I don't remember a single water balloon in this movie, okay? Like, I don't know what kind of water fights you're having, my man. But anyway. Anyway, so uh, that was the first scene I was ever shown. Jordan showed me, he's like, that's pretty dope, right? And I was like, yeah, that's freaking insane. Like, when he's like choking her. But it was just like out of context. I was like, I mean, it's cool, I guess. And yeah, then, you don't care about anything. It's like, why is he killing someone named Love? Why would you ever strangle Love to death for the good or Because he's trying to feel something, get it? It's a metaphor. Gosh dang it. Yeah. Well, I watched it for the first time after my mission, and holy fudge. I was like, this movie's amazing, Jordan. I was like, what the fudge? Why did you tell me that you, you didn't think I would enjoy it? Jordan didn't think I have a taste. And so, well, and I, then, I just didn't know you were into slower films. I, I don't know. Zodiac? Because you used to think used to think Transformers 3 was amazing. So I don't When know. I was 14! <laughs> you bring up this thing every, every time. It's I saw so Transformers much fun. 3 and I was like, that was a really fun movie. And Jordan was like, that was garbage. But you're like 23 going to like film school. I used to love the island in high school. You know, I get it. Michael Bay, is, he's a great visual now now he's coming out with a new jake gyllenhaal movie and that'll be cameron's new favorite yeah it's got the greatest director of all time (laughs) and and my my favorite favorite actor (laughs) oh my gosh and then re-watching for the pod um yesterday well two days ago and then today goodness gracious yeah it jumped from it was originally the first time i watched it 25 in my top 10 and then it was 18 and now it's 12 Wait, wait wait sorry there's a 25 in your top 10 that's that's (laughs) impressive math there cameron my top 100 sorry I'm just teasing you, dude. You're like, I have 25 movies in my top 10. <laughs> I just like that. Yeah, I, have, like, I, have I, I actually have 100 movies in my top 10, so. Yeah, there's 100 movies in my top 10 movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and gonna, we're going to sit down and go through all of them, folks. Love it. How about you, Matthew? What was it like watching? Do you prefer Matt or Matthew, I should ask? Um, pretty much everybody calls me Matt, except for my mom and my wife, so. <laughs> Maddie boy. Matthew. You can also, or, yeah, you can also call, call you Maddie, Maddie boy. Maddie boy. That works. Well, for me, I went into the movie going, uh, I watched it in the theaters. I went in pretty blind because I had never seen Blade Runner. And so I didn't really know what I was getting into, but I knew Denny Villeneuve. And so I was like, oh, it's going to be great. Um, but I think the first thing that I, that I loved about the movie, just especially on the theaters, was just the visuals and the amazing cinematography. Um, Roger Deakins, I believe, was the cinematographer and yeah. he, he, he's probably my favorite cinematographer out there. He's, he works on some just amazing movies. And he's just made a few good films. <laughs> just, just a few. <laughs> Pretty much all of the good ones. <laughs> yeah. um, but so... Is he the one that partnered with Alejandro Irenatu? Well, he did No Country for Old Men, 1917. He did the most the beautiful Revenant, Bond right? movie, Sicario. Skyfall. <laughs> yeah, Skyfall. Yeah. Skyfall. Yeah, he did Fargo, right. too. And prisoners, yeah. So he he's amazing. I I love his around. I love his use of color, especially in in this movie. It's just it's fantastic, mm. especially in Vegas. But mm. second time coming around, I mean, I've watched it tons before then, but yesterday, watching it, it's just uh, I think it, one it re- reinforced that um, 
but then as well, I think in this one in particular, I was kind of focusing just um, a little bit more on the story structure itself in it. And so I think it was, um, it's just a, an amazing story all around and visually played perfectly. Great. Mm -hmm. So I watched this movie, I was going to go see it in theaters, but on account of not knowing what to expect, just as far as Denny Villeneuve being a Frenchman, you know, he could be quite the ladies. No, I'm kidding. I don't well, know. I mean, after but watching his Enemy. Work, you can certainly, yeah, yeah. And after watching Enemy, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, guys. but if you do watch this movie, there's like a giant chick, like, walk in the city. Like, it's inescapable. Do, do, yeah. I mean, do we believe that in the U.S. that's okay? I don't know. I mean, would that ever happen? Maybe that far in yes. the future? That's when they'll <laughs> come out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, uh, yeah, this, this movie was. Uh, I was like, okay, I'll put on the back burner. I heard what you said about it, Jordan. I was excited about the Rotten Tomato score. Uh, but I was also curious because people didn't seem to like it as much as the critics. And I was like, okay, okay. So it's a little bit more thought-provoking for a sequel. It's not like the blockbuster action pack, like, hey, this is the sci-fi movie of the year kind of thing. Like, Kind of like what we're getting with Dune a little bit. But um, I, I, I understand that Danny Villeneuve really loves this film, especially love Dune. But like, I like that he likes sci-fi and he has a knack for it. I think he's really good at posing the question so i enjoyed this movie first well i think a lot of people are like i need to see this again or they're yes. like i need to hear what other people yes. are saying before i say anything i will admit it once more on the podcast i mentioned this on prisoners and some of the other danny villeneuve movies we've done like enemy i don't think i've ever understood a danny villeneuve film <laughs> on the, the first, first time, time i saw yeah. it yeah even arrival i'm so stupid like i think that's probably should be the easiest to grasp technically even though the twist obviously not a lot of people see but at least he explains it and then you understand it, even like in Prisoners. And I'm like, wait, what is she talking about? <laughs> what does she mean? The little girl? What do you mean you don't know who the little girl is? Like, what are you, stupid? Like, it's your daughter. <laughs> like, I'm so stupid and I didn't get it. I'm like, oh, because my perception of time has been warped by movies because I've always understood them to be flashbacks or whatever. I just, I like that. So, um... I really yeah, like dude, this movie. I, 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 I had to watch. I had to watch yep. the video two time. My first time out, I had to watch like a YouTube video explaining because I'm like, I really like yeah. that, but I didn't really understand the whole plot. And yeah, like, I don't. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't understand the whole point of it. Yeah, but in the end, sometimes it's kind of fun because I just allow myself to be submersed in a world, and it's take me for a ride, Danny, because I, I'm in your tr capable hands. And I, I wasn't disappointed. I we watching this film. I liked it a lot more on rewatch than I did my first time. Yeah, I think this movie is really cool, and it benefits from a rewatch because it's a pretty long and it's a little exposition heavy, and it's very subtle. Like, I mean, I think subtlety is the number one word I would use. I mean, it's very impressive visually speaking, and the sounds are great. Callbacks to the original Blade Runner, very um, paying homage to all those things that I loved about it. But it's it's like. I don't know. It's like very slow. It's methodical. And the characters' decisions and their reactions and their emotions are very muted a lot of the time. And it's hard to understand what people are thinking. Like, like how significant is this? But you know? subtle. I'm used to watching, Subtle's a good word, though. I'm used to watching teleseries, you know? I mean, novelas. They're just like, <laughs> Lucia, Maragraciana, seas tu! You know, like, it's really <laughs> intense. And uh, it's really obvious. Like, oh, I think she's upset. You know, I want to hear that. And then this one, it's just like Ryan Gosling staring off in the distance and maybe a single tear is just about to escape his eye, but we don't see it. So <laughs> just, I'm like, what is he thinking in there? I, <laughs> I, 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 saw, I saw a video talking about this and he's like, and, he's like, and uh, Ryan Gosling being a replicant. He's like, which I'm, he's like, I also think he's a replicant in Drive. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah, he played both a replicant those, in both Drive. Those roles, yep. He's a menace. Y yep, yep. He played the replicant in a few different movies, which is interesting. But I think he's doing a lot, to be fair, to Ryan Gosling. Because I've seen him in movies like... The Notebook. Me, Lars, and the Dying... Or no, sorry. Yeah, what? me, Lars... No, no, no. no. La me, it's it's uh, Lars and the Real Girl. And the Real Girl. Which is not a real girl, so watch that movie and you know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it's real to him. Anyway, this movie, uh, it was fun and benefited from a rewatch, so good time. Um, let's get into two of our favorite things from this film. Why don't we start with you, Matt? Well, uh, I think my favorite part and the favorite like scene or, or just thing about the movie in general. It can be a scene. It could be a part. Yeah. yeah. So two my, favorite things. My favorite part, I guess, in the movie was uh, it, it gave me literal chills the first time I watched it, was, which I'm assuming it might be other people's as well. But when he realizes, or at least he thinks he realizes that you know, he's, he's, uh, the child, the child. And, you know, the chosen one, <laughs> we had a, we had a great reenactment. The chosen one, Annie. <laughs> I'm a kid. 
yeah. where he just screams and like that's the first little bit of emotion and he just you know i think in that one in that little part the the acting genius of ryan gosling like just showed in full force and so i i love that part and then yesterday kind of still staying on ryan gosling and his um i guess acting and, and his emotions because this movie is very emotional it's not supposed to be emotional because he's a replicant and i and i think the parts where he shows emotion those are kind of the most important ones and one of the things that i was kind of noted that i noticed yesterday um, was at the very last moment when he's when he tells um, uh, Harrison Ford or um, Detective Decker. Deckard to go see his Decker. daughter. That's the first time that he actually kind of smiles a little bit. I mean, he even he doesn't really smile. And, <laughs> and but after you know, just like I don't, dude. <laughs> but after he, Matthew's like, I cry when I'm <laughs> after he. I'm kidding you, Matt. Oh, no, it's all maybe. good, bud. After you know, he <laughs> he he does what that one lady says. You know, dying for the right cause is the most human thing we can do. That's kind of where he he's like, oh, I, I'm 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 a human basically, because you know, that's kind of what Blade Runner is. You know, what makes a human, and he finally has that small little little smile. And I feel like that was like I had never noticed that until last night's viewing, and I thought that was like a huge a huge deal for me. I'll spoil a movie for you. I love what you were saying, Matt. I'll spoil a movie for you with uh, Robin Williams. There's a whole movie where this robot becomes more and more sentient and he keeps becoming more and more human. Centennial Man? A centennial <laughs> Man, yes. And then he keeps convincing people that he's human. A bicentennial Man? I don't know what it is, but I think it was Centennial Man because now you mention it. They had the same three laws. I just want to throw this out there. They had the same three laws that they had in iRobot. Robot. I, yeah, I don't know if that's like, that must be like science fiction lore because it was literally the same three laws. A robot cannot harm a human or whatever. And two, it must do anything a, a, a person says unless it conflicts with the first law. And a robot can defend itself unless it conflicts with the first, uh, first or second law. It literally is the same beat for beat in, in iRobot as it was in this movie. right? And, and Robin Williams becomes a human at the very end. He ends up dying of old age. Like, I don't no robots could do that but and then they like uh, the the jury comes out and they're like yeah you are human and he already died <laughs> i just had to spoil that movie because again in the face of this movie i like this movie much more because it's not as corny brian gosling in the face of death he has a spear through his side and he's literally dying on the steps and he's like i Gave myself to something bigger. That is the most human thing. I died as a martyr trying to reunite this guy with his with his daughter. I freaking love that. That was so great. And you're right. That little smirk on his face, that tiny little Ryan Gosling yeah. Boy Scout smirk that he's got. You're just like, oh, you dang and, charmer. That was a great ending. T- t- after I was in my car, like, after I'd seen it for the first time, I was in my car, and I was like, I don't think I understood it. And all of a sudden, I started thinking of that scene, and I was like, oh, my gosh, he... Finally, felt human. Became he, human. he finally like showed <laughs> the that he son of a no he no it. he finally like had a soul and then I just started bawling like right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. No, I know, but I just love it. Like I was thinking, and I like, pardon my language. I just love that scene in movies. Like that son of a b, he did it. You know, like get on him. He's a human. <laughs> I think Ryan Gosling has has the world you know wrapped around his finger. I mean, he's got the women with the notebook and the guys with Blade Runner 2049 he's just got us weeping for real he should run for president <laughs> with his Dude, have you guys sharp seen, political while we're on this Ryan Gosling uh, gush I want to say have you guys seen the videos of Ryan Gosling refusing to eat his cereal please look it up if oh, you haven't there's just compilations of Ryan Gosling oh yeah swipe. when he like swipes in movies when he yeah it shows like like a hand with a spoon like a tepid hand like shaking showing like <laughs> like some cabin crunch or whatever the cereal is and they're like putting it up to Ryan and then he like swats the screen and like all of his movies he's like typecast is the guy that refuses cereal and it is so funny look it up look up Ryan Gosling refuses to eat his cereal it's the funniest video well it's just because in interviews he's always moving his hands and it looks yes, like he's well, swatting it wasn't away. just in interviews though it was also in a lot of his movies he does oh, that really? hand gesture yeah oh. like it's like famous movie scenes where he like moves his hand and he like refuses to take the cereal just look it up Ryan Gosling <laughs> refuses to eat his cereal it's the funniest video and it just, again, gives me hope for humanity. So just had to gush there. Cameron, how about you, two of your favorite things? My favorite thing about this movie is just the character arc of Ryan Gosling. I just think it's so beautiful how, one, you see 
like what you think is the hero's journey going to be kind of like the Harry Potter, the Anakin, like just the story of like, oh, here's this person who was like protected at a young age because he was so important. And then just that moment. And then Dumbledore's army, <laughs> briefly, they're like, yeah. you're going to lead the resistance. Yeah, and, like, and, and then you're like, oh my gosh. And then which, a like, war. just the saddest, like, and especially on the second view, I just felt it so much more because I understood it, like, in the moment. It's just when she's just like, oh, you thought it was you. Don't we all, like, we all wish it was us. And I thought that's such a beautiful thing that she's like, we all wish it was us. And that's how I kind of feel like a lot of times it's harder for us because I'm, Sometimes we feel like, oh, I wish my life was, like, more meaningful or more this. But then, like, just the arc of him realizing, okay, I'm not the one, but I can be my own hero of my story. And so that's what he, like, realizes that I just need to do something to, like, make my life worth living and, like, meaningful. And so it didn't have to affect everything, but then he's like, I'm going to do something worth living for and worth dying for. And so I just thought that arc was just such a beautiful thing to show in a movie, especially play like demonstrated by a person who's not technically human would would replicants go to ai heaven because i'd like to think he'd be reunited with joy but i don't know is, <laughs> oh, is that yeah. is that something do androids go to heaven they kept hammering <laughs> poor ryan about the fact that he was a robot like throughout the entire film every time it was like oh he's starting to feel like you know feel something all of a sudden it undercuts like right away like when I he's literally like yeah. put they need jobs in this universe like therapists for robots because yes. they just get on all yeah. throughout the movie yeah like they treat him like a freaking toaster that doesn't work properly man they're just so mean well, to she's him. like tell me your yeah like, your a childhood memories like like i can barely remember him and they're like i'm not real and she's like what if i told you it was an order i'm like goodness gracious this lady's literally just forcing him to <laughs> recite like code i'm like what a freaking bully yep. goodness gracious. oh yeah Dude, there's a, there's an interesting thing too with that whole conversation that he has with Robin Wright's character, his police detective chief lady or whatever. That's very interesting. But he said it a lot her. though, because what's her name's like you've told me a million times that story. So he t it's it's just he tells it to the people that he you know is closest to, and and it's kind of cool that he feels more I guess human with the other robot, which is so interesting because yeah. he connects with her. And I mean, see, and that's that's going into my second favorite thing. Well, obviously, Anna Diarmas is fetching one of my wives. God <laughs> dang, dude, she's so beautiful. And then uh, I just think it's such an interesting idea, kind of like you're talking about, Jordan. I think it's cool how like she thought he was so special and like always thought he was special, even before knowing or thinking the possibility of him even being like a real person. She just loved him for who he was. Yeah, but and was she programmed to she do though? that? See, did no, she, see, I, she really loved no, him. But see, hey, Joe, you look like a good boy, Joe. And then yeah. everything like, you need to hear, everything you need to see, that, yes. or everything you and want it's to. so sad. It's the saddest thing. And then he kept telling her, he's like, you don't need to say that. I was just like, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> that is the saddest <laughs> I know. thing, but guys. See, but I oh think it's goodness. so beautiful because I honestly genuinely feel like that uh, when she said, I love you at the end, that it was genuine. She wasn't just fearful that her program was terminating here? Just a little bit <laughs> slightly worried, she, worried about her she was the one that She was the one that suggested it, so I'm just saying. No, I love what you're saying, Karen, because see, that's the thing. I like that you're, you're falling for this, Cameron. I fall. I she fell is for Lexi. She is, she is Alexa. She is Siri. <laughs> that's all it is. You're, you cried it's over just, the It's just like Siri, her, dude. Okay? And her, I cried. I was like, holy <laughs> bro, fuck you. feed it made me cry. I was like, run down bad. Well, but that, she's an AI. I think there's a difference between being programmed and then AI, right? Or are we getting into like... Uh, I, I, I definitely uh, agree with that. Cause, well, okay, no, cause but see, I mean, wait, so that's what she's a, she, wait, like, what are you saying? She could yeah. grow. I don't think that Joy yeah. necessarily could grow. But, see, but, she, but she Joy, Joy could have exactly she could get upgrades. She, she could get upgrades and go freely no, around. No, but see, but was. Joy could have experiences and memories, which I think having experience and memories allows you to grow. So technically, she is as human as artificial intelligence is. Ah. Uh, Maybe. I mean, it, it is crazy. Like, let's let's be real here. Like, if any of us here, let's say we lived in a world. Yeah. What makes you what makes you human or what makes you artificially intelligent? Right. Right. Yeah. Like, imagine imagine if we lived in a world where it's like, OK, our bodies are breaking down. What if you could just take a, a, a freaking straw and <laughs> suck out your brain and put it into a fishbowl and give it arms and legs? And you're like, oh, my gosh, and, my it, consciousness. But, uh, I but exist only, and I don't need a heart. Only yeah, if the like, thing that I put my body into is black, because, man, that I want to have those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Only if I'm put into an able-bodied black man's yeah. body would it be a real living. That's, that's, you know? When you said suck their brain, you I, I was literally thinking of, like, get out. Is that what you suggested, <laughs> No, I'm just saying, like, like, let's say it's robotic, you yeah, know, I like, know. like, like, right? So, like, if my entire consciousness was, like, transferred to a machine, like, could I still be myself? Like, how much of yourself, like, carbon would you need in order to still remain your, what, yourself? What right? Like, would you your soul you? transfer? Yeah, what makes you you? Like, your and well, honestly, that's what that's the where, first yeah, one I, talks yeah. about a lot. And that's why the guys are constantly like, I need my photographs. I need my photographs. It's like, what that, that's how they define it's like, oh, it's their memories that show them the, makes them more alive or more human because right know. right and, and it is weird too because i'm like why did the tyrell corporation initially give the robot like they wanted to create him as, as humanly as possible but why wouldn't they downgrade then later because they said like we we made him stronger but why would you need to give him emotion wouldn't you want them cold and calculated and and feelingless because you wanted to execute other replicants right but if you gave it emotion it's going to start feeling the emotional weight but then again i guess that's what the correction of the robot with the cells you know is to bring cells. You know, start him back on base well the, cells. back on base right tyrell and and kind of uh Jared Jared Leto, Leto. a little bit both of them i kind of felt like as a creator, you kind of want to create life. Like you, it, yeah, you it, want to get so good at it, you're like, oh, I am God, you know. Yeah, God complex. It's right? essentially that is like they're Only trying. They're playing God. It's Frankenstein. It would have been great if he gotten killed by his creation. I'm just saying, it would have made the movie more exciting. Well, that was then it would have just been a complete repeat of uh, the first. Yeah, one, I but... still wanted to see Jared Leto's blind eyeballs get squished in his head by Rutger Howard. <laughs> <laughs> I would have enjoyed that a lot, but all I thought of was poor Harrison Ford. Like I'm like this poor old guy. He's got to act opposite of crazy wacky Jared Leto. I just felt so bad for Harrison Ford. He's just like, I'm too old for this. <laughs> That's the feeling I got in that scene. But anyway, one thing kind of going, keep going back to um, Anna de Armas's character. Yes. Let's talk more about her. When I was watching this video that kind of talked about. <laughs> let's talk. Yes. 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 Please. Yeah, let's let's go talk back. a little bit more about continue, her. Continue. <laughs> one of the, one of the reasons why I don't necessarily feel like she had, um, Ryan Gosling's character, or Kay's, his, she didn't have his, like, best interests at heart, is in movies, and, like, symbolism is everything, and, and the eyes are, like, um, kind of the, the gateway, or they kind of, you see this a lot in soul. anime, right? If, if there's, like, a, the windows if the their soul. eyes are, like, covered, they can't be trusted, or whatever, there's, there's something going on with the eyes, and I think that this translated to this movie, because, one, you have, um, in the big pink uh, giant billboard, she's woman. freaking yeah, yeah. She's got her soulless eyes, black eyes, and then same thing with um, with Jared Leto. He doesn't have those those eyes because I feel like they've kind of lost their their soul, right? In in his in his Ooh, search for I like this, creating. Matt, you need to keep coming back on the pod, dude. I love you, man. <laughs> keep talking, keep talking, keep in, going, keep going. In his search for to create, you know, human life and become like a god. In that search, he's kind of, um, it's corrupted him. And so he doesn't have this, you know, he, he kills a lady because, you know, it kills a, a creation of his, which um, when when uh, Harrison Ford says, you don't have children, do you? And he's like, oh, I have millions. Like, yeah, but you kill them. You know, you don't really care about them. You know, so in his search for, you know, creating this this workforce and this, these, um, these children, he's lost that soul. And so I feel like with... Anna de Armas's character, she, in although she has eyes in all the other scenes, in that one particular scene, I feel like that kind of shows her true self because that's what she was designed to do. Well, that is interesting too. The opening uh, shot can, is like a, of an eye, which yeah, is can, kind of the yeah, window. Yeah, of the I love that you said that because in the first movie it did do that as well, like, yeah. right? And I thought that was a good callback, but I'm like, and it was and Ryan he gouged Gosling's out his creator's eyes, like no, essentially. See, but that's the same. That's the same thing, though. Soul. But you could, I could, I, I want to argue that, like, you could say the corporation who created Joy in and of itself is soulless, but Joy has a soul because of her experiences, because of the person she grew to love in Ryan Gosling, and so that's what helped her become or transcend being just a soulless thing was loving somebody i'm so sorry cameron but i'm gonna have to to mark you uh, you know mark points against you on this podcast because you're fundamentally wrong i'm so sorry um <laughs> Did the fil- the but film that's go okay because you're letting your attraction for anna de Armas get in the way of your better judgment because <laughs> let's be real here there's no reason why Danny Villeneuve would have kept that. I like what Matt was saying because in the end, after that scene, like I, I believed it too, Cameron, but I literally think that the scene after the billboard comes after as a final nail in the coffin just to drive the point home because 
this entire time he did believe that he maybe had a, a, this a real connection, and that like is the ultimate betrayal because even the one person thing, this AI, this flash drive, Cameron. Like, that, that's what it was. It was a flash drive of memory. And all these movies stored on your flash Tyler, drive. And you the, wanted... that, that's what he was... Well, no, but it was actually a, who was projecting herself onto... Dude, that reminded drive. me of her. Those both... Uh, at least they didn't uh, yeah, do what they did in her. Same thing. Fetching, make, you have to, like, experience the entire scene. And I was like, skip, 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 skip. Yeah. <laughs> No, but Ty, she even got disconnected. She was saying, I upload all my stuff onto that. So she was trying to become more and more human as, as human as you could possibly become. And I think right, she... But, but again, is that because of her own free will and volition? Or is this just because yes. she's programmed to say yes, whatever no. Ryan Gosling wanted to hear? Ryan Gosling wanted to have the most real thing possible. See, but how did she like, know that? Because she's gotten to know him through personal experience and she's grown. <laughs> Cameron's like, if I download enough movies on my flash drive, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it becomes sentient enough and it has enough memory stored on it and it's personal to me, I might... <laughs> That's what Cameron's thinking, dude. You're a weirdo, Cameron. I'll link it up to him. I like how yeah, Ty just puts words in my mouth and then, call, and then calls me a weirdo. Everybody, Cameron, you just uh, became on the FBI's watch list. I'm pretty sure they just linked you with January 6th somehow. You know, you freak. <laughs> I love you, Cameron. I'm teasing you. I think that's interesting discussion, but ultimately I err on the side of, no, I think that... It was created by a cold corporation. I don't think she transcended because after that, I don't think we ever see her again or have mention of her, right? Like, I almost wish that there was an ending scene where it was like, oh, I did save her file. But in the end, Ryan Gosling dies. But, and he's not smiling because he was thinking of Joy. He was smiling because he finally had a real human experience and he never had it with Joy. Boom! There's the answer. And so, Joy is something you can and, always see and, and hear, but alert. never feel. <sighs> Well, but That's you just said, though, you're kind of contradicting yourself a little bit just because you're you're saying that me? the okay. main character, you, Ty, you're the main character of Ryan Gosling, you said, essentially achieved becoming human at the very end. So is yes. that not the same oh, for can't... Joy? No, it, it yeah. is possible, but I'm saying I don't, oh, so that's interesting. Like, did did that Because AI she sacrificed, and yeah, that's why it. when she said, I yeah. love you, she meant mm. it, son. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Again, because I'm, she was giving. Up I, I don't her know life if there to... was enough evidence that she transcended it because. Uh, but that Why? Is because, because of her create, the... because of her creators, just like Ryan Gosling was created to be a monster, but then he why? went against his creators. That's literally why. All the odds. I'll throw you a bone. I'll throw you a bone. I thought it was really interesting when there was a conversation between Ana de Armas and the <laughs> that comes over. I don't know what's the color. The other lady, um, <laughs> she's actually in the resistance, which I thought was interesting. Um, weird tie-in, but she yeah. actually tells her like, "I'm done with you now. You can go." And there's almost a twinge of jealousy, which I thought was weird because Ryan Gosling was not in earshot, and it's almost like, is she actually experiencing jealousy, or is this the way she's programmed? Like, I thought that was interesting. So, to, I'm going to throw you a bone there. I think it is possible that they could hint at maybe this version of AI. Like, but, but how could that be? I don't know. Maybe how because- kind of you to throw us a bone, Ty? No, yeah, but, but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, she actually had jealousy. She's like, I'm done with you. You can leave now. Like, I don't need you anymore here. I don't want you here anymore, right? That Did you guys not get that? She was literally like, go. Yeah. yeah. Right? Remember that well, scene? And it wasn't an earshot of Ryan Gosling. It was just like a private moment that she had. And because with Ryan Gosling, she could have been, you know, like, whatever. But, you know, if he was in the room, she could have been pretended to be jealous. But, like, she, he wasn't there. That wasn't for show. That was, like, actually how she, quote, unquote, felt if she can feel anything at all. So I, I think that's interesting. I'm throwing you a bone here. I thought that was an interesting tidbit that I caught and I was like oh the AI is getting jealous huh jealous of, uh, <laughs> well I just think it's so somebody. fascinating that Ryan the entire movie like every chance he has to like connect in with the human he turns it down and he's constantly trying to find other robots that he can connect with and yes. Robin Wright his boss assaults him at work and is like hey what happens yeah. if I finish that <laughs> bottle of gin <laughs> um <laughs> It is the, no. I sue you for millions of dollars and I retire on the Cayman Islands, dude. That's what happens. <laughs> Cry me, Ryan, or Robin. Freaking crazy lady. Oh, uh, yeah. So I think that was really cool. She, but, she and, and the girl said, and she's like, oh, you don't like yeah, another, humans. And that was another yep. time he... he mm. But then, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Because he finds more humanity in things that aren't necessarily human. And it's so but, sad. To be fair, they were all him. created by humans, though. Every, to be fair. Everyone, everyone Everything that he loved Every time created. they mention joy, they're like, oh... You, you like artificial women. I'm like, why make him feel so sleazy? Like, he's not even real. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. No, but see, so do you get what I'm saying, though? But it goes back like, to everything the that original movie, which says more human than human. It's just this yeah. idea that, like, yes. they have yes. more feelings. It's the same as Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's like yeah. all the people are, like, these mindless robots. And the robot, uh, what's his name? Stan? Dave? I don't remember. The Hal? Hal. He's like... <laughs> 
He's Stand more. He My feels, goodness, Jordan, you have to. You he have has, to step down. He has more. A strike I mean, awarded to Jordan he, for the he, podcast. He has more emotion how. than all the other people. So I just think that's so interesting. Like, wait, he has more emotion. Oh, well, yeah, so he is. Okay. He's like, so, I'm afraid, Dave. I'm afraid, and all the other people are I'm just sorry, like Dave, staring at screens, like. Nah, nah, nah. Similar to the <laughs> robot in, in Rogue One, he has. He's more human. than And my any friend of those thinks that Stanley Kubrick is so far up his own butt. But I like what you're saying, Jordan. No, like the 2001: The Space Odyssey. More now. What were you, What did you say, Kim? I was just saying same thing as the robot in Rogue One. He's more human than any of those actors. <laughs> <laughs> Did they even deal with that? But he was just more likable because that movie was pretty wooden. But no, it was, it was it was good. It's true though. That main girl, she was so muted. It certainly was better than than the last two Star Wars movies that we had. Yeah. He was he was just the only one with a personality. Yes. 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 Thank yes. you. Uh, Except the guy that shot the rebel at the beginning. I liked that. Oh, I the blind guy. I liked him. I am yeah. one with a. Or what does he say? I'm one with the force, and the force is me. I think he says all for one and one for all. Yeah, so much. (laughs) My favorite. I think he says go go Power Rangers. (laughs) (laughs) He says Mastodon, and then the suit comes in. (laughs) My favorite person is the person who drops bombs in space, and somehow gravity takes the bombs at the very beginning of the movie. Rose's sister. (laughs) Rose's dumb sister. No, and she's not dumb because she's Korean. In spite of the fact that she's Korean. Is that number one or is that that number nine? I can't remember. (laughs) It's number number nine. nine. You're talking about The Last Jedi. They're all the same to me. But I knew what you were talking about. (laughs) I just said, yeah, Rogue One was better than the last two Star Wars movies we got. I definitely agree with you there, so... They're all the same to me. Oh, boy. Oh, I thought you were like, talking about Blade Runner 249, like, bombs from space? What? <laughs> I was trying to remember. Bombs I was are like, dropping did I gravity? watch the wrong thanks, movie? Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for knowing what I, I was talking about. I'm, I'm on your wavelength, buddy. I'm on your wavelength. I'm in your corner, man. So, uh, oh, so real quick, lastly, I do want to get everyone's opinion. So who is the most human in this movie? Oh, dude, the, most the dog. Human. Who feels the most, dude? Easily. Dude, the dog. Doesn't. Drinking I, liquor I think, off I the think floor, the dog, dude. I think, real quick, I think that was a great way of Denny Villeneuve addressing the fact that some people find that Deckard is a replicant and some people argue that he's not. Now, this actually extends to... Says, what does it matter? The Ridley Scott, the director, and Harrison Ford at odds with each other because Ridley Scott's like, oh, he's definitely a replicant. And then Harrison, Harrison Ford, Ford and like this no, screenwriter... He's He's like, no, he's not. He's human. That, so I, I love that discussion, right? Because it's like, and in the end, he is aging, but he sees the dog and he's like, is the dog real or not? Like, technically, is it like one of those fake replicant dogs or is it like just a human bred dog or whatever? He's like, like why does it matter? And he's like, yeah, he's like, ask him. Like, it doesn't matter. And I thought that was really clever because in the end, like, they're blurring the lines. Like, Harrison Ford didn't care. He's like, I have a human experience and a relationship to this dog. This is my man's, be- man's best friend. And it's serving the sole purpose of a dog, to be a companion and love him and, and be by his side. And I'm like, that's what a dog does. What does so it I mean to be a it was dog? Fabricated in the well, it's the yeah, same as finding out whether or not Deckard's an actual replicant. It's like, it doesn't it, it, matter. Exactly. And that's yeah. why, again, it was a great way to address that in this yes. movie because we're to assume that's the same Deckard because, again, same Joyce, or what was her name? Rachel. Yeah. Same Rachel. And then, you know, uh, same, same Wait, past. did so, everybody say, I, I didn't get to say my two favorite things really quick. Yeah, no, we haven't. Yeah. We just okay. got into this tangent. But yeah, go okay. ahead, Jordan. Two of your favorite I just wanted to say, because uh, watching the behind the scenes, obviously, first time I saw it, very visually beautiful. But watching the behind the scenes just makes me grow to have an even more appreciation for it, that they actually built all these tiny little models and built th- those cities. And I mean, those are my favorite types of movies when they just go in and touch up with using special effects and they can actually build all the other stuff. Like that, oh, I, I just have mad, mad, mad respect well, for like that. Like Psychopath, Christopher Nolan building or planting like 400 million acres of corn fetching interstellar one shot <laughs> <laughs> he's like we have to wait for a season hey, gonna... it was worth it <laughs> yeah it was, was so worth when you, it was when so you make good a, a space movie and you don't go into space for 45 until 45 minutes into the movie you need to have oh. corn in there yeah. <laughs> homegrown brother come on i love it and then the uh, it. second thing i loved is oh boy i mean you guys already went into ryan goslin so i don't know if i'll say a whole lot more about that but I'm checked. I'm checked to the tits. Sorry, that is big short. Wrong movie. Love Ryan. Oh man, I'll have to think about it. I I had it in my head and now I forgot it. Uh, the music or the visuals, George? No, well, actually, I have a, a few nitpicks about the other stuff. I can get to that. The music oh makes me sick. I know you wanted more than the first one. Yes, I just okay. That that's my nitpick. Uh, just, there wasn't there wasn't enough. Like the scene where he's walking into Vegas, I thought they could have had some music playing because it, it just it was silent. Like. I don't know. Oh, I, so you uh, need you need music to feel alive, Jordan. You need to have wait, music to Jordan, feel like you have no, a music. Yeah, I felt a little empty. Yeah. See, but jo- well, Jordan, yeah, Jordan, yeah, I well, think maybe that, we need well, to that could be juxtaposing Vegas. Yes, man. Yeah, I'm that's literally true. calling up attention to the fact that Jordan. Yes, I think I think See, that's because the music makes you feel alive. Mm-hmm. And I think that if there was music, 
they're like it's just an empty Las Vegas, which all we we know Las Vegas is just you know usually bustling with people. And when you when you go into Vegas and you don't hear any music or any sound, I think it kind of makes you feel as well that you know you uh, know the place. Which is why I thought it was so funny that it was flashing those lights of like that really exciting show, right? With like dancing women everywhere and Elvis on the stage, and it was like or like a rock band or whatever, and it kept flashing, and it like I was like oh like. I thought they would finally have it playing while they had the fight, but it kept like glitching, and I'm like, it's so hollow, it's so empty, it's fake. Scary. The glitching glass. I'm like, I'm almost like Danny will knew. Hey, easy, don't don't attack our precious Las Vegas. Okay? Yeah. That's the, <laughs> the cream of the crop that represents America that are living there. You could walk down Vegas and see an adult man in a diaper and Batman at the same time. <laughs> and that is that is something really impressive. So Ty, it reminded me of the last time I'm talking about. You're lucky. Of showing like the darker side, maybe of. Uh, CD underbelly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, kind of like Army of the Dead did. Because speaking of Army of the Dead, Dave Bautista's back, which is the <laughs> coolest intro to any movie. Really like this tension building because in the first movie you had that weird interview with that guy yelling about turtles or something, and then he blows him away, which was insane. And this movie I liked it because it was more of the hand to hand combat, and then he finally gets the pistol. It's so cool. And then that, I just that, love his line that comes back because you've, uh, you've never seen a miracle and you understand what he's saying. Because he's Dave Bautista's He saw witnessed the, the birth of a child from a replicant. Yes. So good. But dude, so okay, good. also, when he runs through that wall to tackle over Harrison Ford, that's a dope as shizzle. Oh, that is so, so sick. freaking dope. <laughs> Instead just, of <laughs> opening the door. <laughs> it's, it's just, just <laughs> right through the wall. What and then wall he gra- grabs him, and then they get blown back. It was so dope. Can we oh, also I remember. Have- Exciting, okay. exciting stuff. We also just need to give a moment of silence for Ryan Gosling's face, dude, in this movie. He just takes so many punches to the face and to the body. Oh. Dude, that scene where it's just showing the other side of the wall and you're just seeing him, like, about to break through The it. wall started to crack, dude. <laughs> I was like, he babed- and he's fighting Dave Bautista. Like, there's almost no world in which skinny punk Ryan Gosling beats Dave Bautista in a physical fight. But I love that he's, like, this new improved version so we kind of see his physical capabilities and then having to outwit yeah, Dave Bautista. Yeah, the T1 versus the it. T2. Yeah. Yes, yes. You're like, these are two giants fighting. Which, again, it was so easy to see it that way. But for some reason, watching Love fight Ryan Gosling, there just wasn't exactly the same appeal. But I did like her character yeah. as her being the Terminator 3. <laughs> no, see, but I loved it. I loved it just butt, because you know? she yeah. killed the only thing that like he probably loved and felt for. And so that's yeah, what it, it definitely got personal. That, like, yeah. Eh, when he was just drowning her, I was like, Gah! <laughs> I know. I wanted it's him like, to start squeezing her eyes like 20, day, 20 days later. <laughs> oh, that. That, or Blade Runner, first Blade Runner, Cameron. Yeah, that, uh, that's, that's my second favorite part. I've rewatched that scene so many times, and I, I showed Cameron just because it, it's an unbelievably visually cool scene. Like when they're fighting and the wa- water splashing and Harrison Ford's... Wait, wait, the, water, under. the water fight they had? Yeah. Yeah, and just like him fighting and then grabbing that knife. <laughs> every that time he grabs say. that knife and it pulls <laughs> it's a it... weird thing to say! Pulls it out of his hand, like after he holds oh. the knife. Oh, I just... Oh, it makes that, 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 reminds me, that reminds me of Get Out, you know, when she fetching stabs him and he catches it with his hand and he's just like... <sighs> Oh, I don't know if it's catching with your hand if it goes through it. Does that mean he didn't catch it? <laughs> oh, he stopped it with his hand. He, he more than ca- caught it. Yeah. In he fact, technically, it. if yeah. the world is indeed circular, sorry all my flat earthers out there, but if the world is in fact circular, does that mean he's technically palm away from the farthest thing from catching it, if you get my drift? There's some science knowledge for you right there, right? Because if it went just behind his hand, it's technically the farthest thing and the entire world like around the that entire world. That might be the thing. dumbest, smartest thing I've ever heard in my life. Isn't that great? I'm just well, saying, it was the it, furthest thing from catching it. Get it? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Think stupid. about it. Think about it, guys. I'm more smart. I, we know what you're I'm saying. I'm more smarter stupid. because of what I'm saying. <laughs> it's stupid. It went through his hand. It was great. I love knife fights where they catch it in their hand. Karen, you mentioned get out. It's freaking awesome, dude. It's like, well, I, ow, 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 ow. No, it's just, hand it's just, oh, it's, it's making me that. think of uh, Invincible when he time. throws the ball and um, it goes around the curvature of the earth and he yeah, catches and it. He but I'm just yeah. imagining if he missed it, it's like, oh, where would it go? Like, would it come back around again or would it land it some other country? would have killed someone and <laughs> Omni-Man doesn't give a rat's butt clearly about human life. Did what? Does he have a soul? He was born from a Viltrumite. These you know? people so, are like, more human than fetching, yeah, Omni-Man. Viltrumites, dude. My goodness. <laughs> they don't matter. <laughs> Real quick, do you guys have any nitpicks you guys want to throw out about this movie? I mean, I think just one slight one is like, I see, I it's hard because I can't, I, I want to say it, but I don't want to say it. It's because like, there's not really anything I would take out. It's just 
so fetching long. Like, and so that's why I think it also deters a lot of people. Like, being so long and being so slow, I think, is a harder for a lot of audiences to just sit Do down. replicants need to eat? I was going to ask that question. Because I know we see Deckard eat in the first one, those crazy Asian noodles. But in this one, he looks at the, st- the pot of boiling uh, whatever, and I'm like, oh, he ate Dave Bautista's dinner. I was like, that was very nice. But he refused to eat the maggots that he put on the table. It's like for protein or whatever. I thought that was interesting. So he, like, refuses to do human things. Well, and Dave Bautista is like a very maybe, humble farmer, you know? It's like very human life. Maybe they have, the, like, pills that ha- taste like dinners, you know? Like this super advanced movie I saw, <laughs> Cube Zero. Uh, Cube Zero? Yeah, yeah. Maybe they just eat pill form food, well, you know? Uh, Anna de Armas makes him, you know, that hamburger and fries meal. <laughs> the- oh, that's right. Oh, well, no, it, it's like food, it, but then she puts a, a projection of something. Well, yeah. But there but is food. He, yeah, there is yeah. food. Yeah. But then so how I think did she light his cigarette? Was that a fake cigarette or what? I'm confused. I think I was that was one of part. the upgrades that she got, one of his bonuses. Maybe because of the projector light, Cameron, it could shine a light and kind of like like a magnifying glass and light it. That would be my only ass- like. That would be my I was guess. like, oh, I knew she was real. Uh-huh. Cameron's like, she doesn't need that projector. You're real. Take it easy, Cameron, all right? We all know you're... <laughs> what the yeah, fuck? yeah. So My I goodness. Maybe as some psychopath. You are, dude. Love it. I just admire beauty. I think the only nitpick that I would have for the movie is is the part when they're looking at her bones. He zooms in, or, or he's like, oh, what's this? And he's like, oh, it was a C-section, whatever, because he's a medic. And then he, like, zooms in to the cut and keeps zooming in and zooming in. And then he sees the serial number. I feel like, I don't know, to me, I'm like, what is he zooming in on and why? Like, if, I just, I just don't know why he would be zooming in that far. Um, so I was thinking it's because, I guess, with as he has, like, robot eyes or something. Because I was wondering the same thing. I'm like, how, what is he seeing? But I wonder if it's yeah. like, he, as, as a robot, you can, like, essentially, well, you have eyes that can be, like, microscope. Because he was processing that microscope. information fast as fuck when he was going through yeah, his and, records. And, and that's he was like, pause, of, zoom. I was like, holy shit. That's, that's kind of like what I was going thinking. through my homework and reviews. Hey, he, he's, he searches for this stuff as a living, you know? It's, he's good at the one thing. He's... Well, it's yeah. like Harrison Ford in the old movie when it's like enhanced and there's a beep, 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 enhanced, <laughs> beep, 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 and they like keep zooming in. Yeah, they, they had that same mode, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool to have like people zoom so far into something, you know, like if I had an MRI of this loaf of bread, what would be on the inside of it? Probably more bread? I don't know. I have to get an MRI first. Sorry. Uh, that's a uh, quote from, it's, uh, no, not always in sunny Philadelphia. It was uh, Parks and Rec. That was Will Arnett and Leslie Knope's first date where he's that crazy doctor. Guys, my nitpick. I have a question. Oh, at what point do you swear off technology is what I put. Do you find meaning in life? Cells. 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 Interlink. 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 Cells. Interlink. Cells. Interlink. When they say it like, when the guy, like, the guy giving Interlink. the test says it so aggressively. Interlink. Oh Interlink. Goodness. Cells. Cells. Interlink. Interlink. Well, I love when the guy's like, Constant K. You can pick up your bonus. <laughs> Constant K. I just like the name K. I think it's great. So that's why when he's so like, K's not a name. And he's like, give me your real name. Yeah. So he says, I wish, it would have been so, I wish it would have been a K name. That was the only, uh, that's probably one of my nitpicks. Is I Kevin? wish they would have given Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like K-A-Y. Like K. I think K's great. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You're going to name your child that? I thought it was really interesting. At what point do you swear off technology? So I actually like that Ryan, uh, not Ryan Gosling, Danny Villeneuve directed Dune, which is really interesting because in the book and in the other movie, they address, and in the movie, there's visuals. Like, there's a big library, and there's not, like, a bunch of futuristic computers because in the world of Dune, they swear off technology because they had this big technological war against these devices that became so smart that they literally had to fight this giant war with AI. And so I really like that because in this movie, it's like, at what point would you swear off technology? Because it's like, in the end, they're replicating people that are so beyond real that it, it, it's like they're more human than, than the people that were born naturally. So I, I think that is really interesting. Yeah, it's a super so, interesting question to pose. That's a, I, yeah, that's so I'd be like, I swear off so. technology, be like outlaw it, stop it. Because they did, they, uh, Tyrell, they're like, you're disbanded. And then they were like, wait, what if I could, you know, Jared Leto's like, what if we, they ended up seizing a hold of their uh, uh, corporation? And he's like, what if we were allowed to, you know, m- ensure that they couldn't betray us or whatever, couldn't feel, like, what, what did he say? Like, they were more obedient. I can't remember what he said, but basically the title crawl at the beginning explained that Tyrell Corporation went under because people outlawed replicants. But then this new guy, Jared Leto, came in and basically seized everything that the Tyrell had. But then he was like, he made more obedient replicants. Is that right? Talk about a great summary in like 30 seconds. Holy crap. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm glad you found it very, very pleasant. I mean, if you see the first movie, it kind of understands, you know, like, oh, okay, like, so there's still a world of... Well, yeah, around. but that's what I'm saying. Like, if for, if for people like Matt and me, who watched the first one before watching the second one, like, it was just like, holy shiz, this, like, it puts you into the world very, like, well in, like, 30 seconds. So you watched them in order, or you didn't watch them in order? I sorry. didn't watch them in order. Oh, okay, so you watched Blade Runner 2049, and first, then went back yes. and watched Blade Runner. Got it, okay, sorry. I had understood that you said you watched the first one, and then this one, but you watched this one first, got it. Okay, I think I get what you're saying. So, yeah, it, it does a good job at just kind of setting you up in that world. It's pretty simple, right? It's just like, okay, super robot humans are, like, sent to murder other robot humans, right? It's like, you literally get a more effective robot to go kill your other defective RoboCop or whatever, right? Like, Yeah, do you know what movie this reminded me of? This was like a worse version of the movie RoboCop that came out in 2014 or something like that. That movie was a masterpiece. I think I saw it in the theaters with you, Jordan. You, me, and Mom. Uh, I know Mom was there. I didn't know you were there, too. I'm sure she enjoyed it, though, because it was PG-13, and it took out all the blood scopes, man. It was great. And it took out all my favorite stuff, like the camp and the the meta commentary on capitalism and stuff. But anyway. Oh, real quick. That's not a nitpick, but those two statues remind me at, at Vegas. They reminded me way too much of the freaking scene of Atreyu walking through the two Sphinx. Yeah. In Neverending Story. Did anyone get that vibe when he uh-huh. has to walk through? It, and it, the Sphinx it slowly start over their the eyes? That's what... The... The two. Lord of the Rings, too. Yeah. 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 Big, giant elvis statues. Just a little more elegant, right, Cameron? Yeah, a little, a little bit better too, than... Fetching. Not too, like, uh, like pursed lips. Yeah, also better That's than the never-ending story. That's the scariest effing shiz I've ever seen in my I life. I know, and the Sphinx start Horror talking movie. to him, and he's like, Ah, Falcor! We gotta go! And they had the similar sand. images of gi- Artics! Artics! <laughs> giant girls like that in uh, AI, which... What? What did you just say? You just said the the giant statue girls in yeah. Vegas. They look. They have similar ones in AI, the movie AI. Oh, I didn't know what you were saying. Yeah. Is there? There's a movie AI. Hey, okay, thank you. Sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. made by Steven Spielberg, artificial intelligence. Oh yeah, and it had uh, what's his face, Joel, uh, that one kid actor. No, not no, Joel Edgerton. The kid from Six Sense. He, uh, Joel Bridgerton or something. I can't remember his name. Anyway. Hey, Rob Williams is in it. Wait, is that the one where he becomes more human and at the end he dies before no, the verdict comes out? <laughs> Bicentennial is so bad. It's so, so bad. There's a scene where he's like, poke me in the eye, and she pokes him. He's like, ow, I feel. Isn't it great? And I'm like, this is this is so painful. That was worse this than This is so blubber. painful. He ends up marrying a human, and then they end up... Anyway, no, but anyway. Oh, Matt, if you have a social media presence you want to let people stalk you on or anything like that. Uh, sure, I guess. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to. I'm just saying, if you want people to follow you or something. Yeah, I love I love a good follow. Uh, well, got... we don't have any listeners, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie underscore boy ten. That's my Instagram. That's pretty much all I got. Excellent. Uh, and we end every podcast by sharing movies that we've seen lately and movies we're looking forward. Did to we just gonna say if we recommend this movie? Um, yeah. Okay, yes. yeah real quick. With the caveat that there's some scenes. <laughs> Well, there's really one scene, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah two. Worth there's it. two. The scene... <laughs> I don't need to get into it. The, the, the fogged up windows with all the... And then you have the giant robot. Anyways. I, I, well, oh, I'm glad you suppressed yeah, it from yeah, your I, thought, I thought the second thing you were referring to is when uh, Jared Leto is like, slices open his, like, child's stomach. Yeah. Oh, chick, too. Yeah, there's three scenes. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, for all the reasons you guys just said, it makes you feel really uncomfortable. Like we clearly all feel on this well, podcast. It, it, but, no, but, it, but what is nice? It. But what is nice about this is uh, all it takes is one skip for almost for most of them, except for the one we slice up with the I'm I'm giving caveats to people. Ty, you're the one who gets bothered by it, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I record every podcast without my pants on. Okay, I do not feel uncomfortable <laughs> so about uncomfortable. nudity. All right, so I, I just want every. I feel extremely comfortable. What I'm trying to say is this movie has some scenes i i like it i think you should see it if you like sci-fi <laughs> and slow as full see ty's watched the departed watch you just can't stop thinking about people just sitting with their pants off or the, in the, in the theater. <laughs> dude that wasn't that wasn't even a real yeah that, was, that wasn't even real that was fake camera. i'm aware <laughs> that scene is so weird dude he throws <laughs> cocaine <laughs> at <laughs> oh, yeah, it, that movie's insane. Yeah. We're, yeah. Oh, by the way, that's my next movie. By the way, I want to. Well, I asked I you like so ten thousand. Okay, we'll get to it. We, yeah, but that was the movie. I just wanted. Wait, to we go okay, Matt, Matt we tell us what you've seen lately. Sorry, 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 Whoa, there was like Cam? so much going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all from Cameron. What, what did you want to say, Cam? I was just saying, let F, uh, Matt say what he's seen lately. That's literally what I was saying. Yeah, Matt, well, you can lie about how recently you've seen it. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, 
I we mean, don't have any fact checkers. <laughs> <laughs> you, in fact, did not watch that movie lately. How dare Recent you? Recent fact checkers have proven that this is false. I <laughs> obviously, like everyone else, have seen. I saw Dune recently, and then. Hey, and wait! What'd you think? Did you like oh, it? Yeah, oh, did you like it? I loved it. I didn't know. Did you like it, it more was... than Blade Runner twenty forty nine? No. Well, <laughs> I let me see because I I have a I have my Math. movie list. Um, oh, and interesting! Dune, and you saw it in the IMAX too, right? Um, I did. I, would I wish I saw it in the IMAX. Because I have I have it on HBO Max now. Because I don't. It, it, it's it feels illegal that you can just watch Dune on HBO. Max. I know. <laughs> And then you can watch it at home. It's crazy. But no, immediately after watching in the theater, that's great. Yeah. Watch it a second time. It, yeah. But like watching it the second time in on the my small sixty five inch screen, it's it's just like eh. small sixty five. Oh yeah, <laughs> big big brag here. Oh my gosh, sixty five inch. Jeez, well some of us could only afford the fifty eight. Okay, hey, okay. It, man. It, it was a discount. We had me and my wife had some Target gift cards. We went and splurged. <laughs> so I would have gotten an OLED, but didn't. That's too expensive. But anyway, <laughs> but Blade Runner 2049 came out number four. I want to lose my gift card I gave to you for your wedding. So that's part. That's partially my TV. <laughs> no, it was for Christmas. We yeah, because it- that's how gift giving works, Cameron. When you give a gift, you're like, I own that. <laughs> I part. own this gift. <laughs> I own this me. gift with you. Um, <laughs> What'd you buy us? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue back. It's like it's like the those memes with like the American or like the, the yeah the, 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 the flag. Union. They're uh, like <laughs> our kitchen. Yeah, I think my mom anytime I cook something is like our food. Our. And it's like Bugs yeah, exactly. Bunny with the communist flag behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love great. it. So Blade Runner twenty forty nine came in at number four for me, and Dune was number eight. Um, oh so wow! Right I, Are you a big sci-fi nut? Is like, Interstellar what, what's on your one list? for you? Interstellar. So it goes Interstellar, uh, then The Dark wow. Knight, Lord of the Rings one, two, and three because they were all the same movie, and <laughs> <laughs> they're all the same story. <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't. I can't movie. separate them. They're to me. They're all. The, they're just a continuation. Um, Except two is by far the best. No, the most entertaining at watch. No. I mean, three is the yeah. best. What are you talking about? See, they're all just what? three. It's just cool. they're they're all just one movie to me. I I just watch them all at That's the same time. That's Ty's argument yeah, for Ty, Kill yeah, Bill. Yeah, Ty can't say anything. He considers Bill, Kill Bill Volume One and Two the same movie. They because they made a cut of the movie. Do you see? They are. A, do you see the cut version of Lord of the Rings One, Two, and Three? It, it would be newsflash. It'd be a month long. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jeez. My goodness. And then after Lord of the Rings, it, it's Blade Runner. And then, yeah, but it's a lot of Denny Villeneuve is he's uh, he's on there, so it's a lot of sci-fi lo- and lo- stuff. So we did a fantasy. rival a couple weeks ago, Matt, and you were the one oh. that explained that to me in the MTC, and I was like, that movie sucked, and you explained that I'm like, that's, that movie's actually great. <laughs> that's number nine for me. That's right after Dune, so oh, so good. It's really fun to have you on talking about sci-fi movies. Then we'll have to have you on. I again, love Matt. I love good sci-fi movie. Uh, but other than that, I started watching John Wick. The problem with being married is we start movies and we just don't finish them. And so, because I feel yes, bad if I continue I and watch the movie after she's fallen asleep or something. And so, well, that's here's the little secret, Matt. I've probably been married longer than you have. Actually, I actually have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, what you do, you probably you have what you two do is time. you finish the movie, <laughs> and then the next day you say, "Oh, I, I turned it off shortly after you fell asleep," and and that is not <laughs> necessarily a lie. And you just go back and rewatch it's it. True. That's that's what I found is yes. But. And, but if it's not worth it, then you're like, yeah, we don't have to finish it. <laughs> yeah. But we I, don't want to rewatch it. At you're this like, point, yeah, I've, I've, I've watched all of the movies that I'm showing my wife. And so she, you know, for me, it's like, yeah, I don't know how it is. But, but John Wick, Mural and the Dying Girl, which is so good. That's probably my Heck favorite. Yeah, it like, is. Sad they always make fun of me for <laughs> it. I ever no, I'm sure you understand what Karen brings you on the podcast. You, you two just deserve each other, all right? <laughs> Matt, you made the wrong person. Cameron's still single. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we started watching her as well, but we didn't get around to finishing that. All three of those movies we haven't finished. Have you, have you seen her, though? You've seen her. Yeah, right? I've, I've seen her before. It's okay. really good, what, really what, weird, but... What, really weird, but Joaquin is a nerd. Did you guys see the sequel, Him? It's so good, dude. <laughs> so good. It, it's actually She, Her. That's, that's the sequel. Dude, I, I yeah. love him <laughs> so sequel, much. She. I love him, and I love her. Too. I love it. Do you see the problem with this? Anyway, I'm just saying, movies like or TV shows like you and movies called her and him. 
Not good. Not, not that's good. not good. Slippery slope. You have these oh these gosh. ambiguous Shut. words. No call the movie. Cares. Call the movie Blade Runner, and there's no way it could accidentally <laughs> fall into a conversation. That's all I'm saying. Context, <laughs> folks, matters, right? Very words true. Words are flying all over the place. Yes. No truer words have been said. That's spoken. pretty much it. Those are the those are the movies that I've seen lately. Funny that you say that, Ty, because when I would tell Siri, I'd say, "Hey Siri, play." Uh, Blade Runner 2049 says, I'm sorry, I can't look at future listings of Blade Runner. And I'm like, you stupid mother effort, dude. I'm talking about the movie. <laughs> I love it. Hey, uh, so everybody, tune into Future Hood Movie Gems. Everybody, leave us an email, futuremovies at gmail.com. Leave us an email, tell us a movie that you'd like us to review. Tell us what we got wrong in a movie that we reviewed in the past. Tell us that we're wrong for reviewing the movie Cube Zero. Yes. Yes. No more cube movies. I think we're done. There's That's no it. more. We're going to have to watch another terrible franchise now in its place. Sharknado. I can choose the next terrible movie. <laughs> Sharknado. Yeah. Inspiration. Sharknado. The, 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 what was it called? The fourth, uh, the fourth one or whatever? I can't remember what it was called. Anyway. Maybe Transformers Guys, this... for Cameron. Transformers, yes. <laughs> Cameron's favorite my franchise. Fit, my, <laughs> the best movie of all time, Transformers 3. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So like us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Check out our videos. Like them. Leave a five-star review. And uh, leave us a comment, you know, if you guys want us to hear what you guys have to say. We want to take your feedback and then just get upset at you for leaving us a comment and constructive criticism because we're going to get angry at you and I'll fly off the handle and make you unsubscribe from the channel. It happens a lot. It happens more than you think. So, everybody, this has been Future Hidden Movie Gems signing out. Peace. Peace. Bye. Deckard. I don't know. That was my best impression of the...